Hello, I'm Joel Blackford with Beth Hassett Sabbath Fellowship. We are virtual. Uh, please uh, call first, 612-315-6778. We do the philosophy of eschatology, what you need to know, your reality, our existence. We try not to be desperate. Desperate. We try to make sense. We're Beth Hassett Sabbath Fellowship, and we're virtual. There are these odd verses in Daniel where he says, you know, wait until 1290 days, 1335 days. Before what? what, what what's happening at 1260 days? What, what, do, what do these days mean? So we'll discuss it today. The most important thing is that you need to know the timing of the festivals and what Daniel's talking about because he was a good Jewish boy and he, he loved God and he loved the festivals and he wanted to be in Jerusalem for the festivals. The most important festival of the eight, yes, eight, not just seven, is Sabbath. Sabbath, we just had that yesterday and we just had first fruits today. So I'm on, unfortunately, I'm on the Michael Rood calendar, and I've never been on that before that I know of. So the main thing is that Jerusalem, or rather Israel, was dark the first two days of Aviv of this year of 2022. And so we had the barley harvest ready to go, and it was a leap month, but we couldn't see the moon, the new moon. And so you've got to calculate the clock properly. So if Israel is the hour hand, and Jerusalem is the minute hand, then the Temple Mount is the seconds, and you have to calculate it by the moon. That's what God tells you to do. Sometimes he's testing you in a nice way. Will you follow Yeshua wherever he goes, or do you want to do it your own way? So we just had Sabbath again. Passover just ended, and I've still got unleavened matzah. We call it unleavened bread sitting around the house here. And first fruits we just celebrated, so Yeshua resurrected. I used to attend a Lutheran church years ago where the pastor in 1973 didn't believe in the resurrection and really didn't believe in much of anything because the seminary stunk. And so he started believing in the resurrection. He believed in repentance, and he grew his congregation from 115 depressed miserable people to 9,000 really fun people and then they kicked him out <laughs> that's another story but anyway it was really fun to attend there because he believed in the resurrection so you need that that's first fruits bikarim then the feast of festival of weeks pentecost shavuot there are pastors out there i love them dearly mark Biltz, that goes 49 years you know and probably 49 days for his pentecost the problem is that means 50 and it is 50 years for jubilee you know and so uh, there uh, there are 49 year cycles too but there's a 50th that's critical so yes there's many cycles and i can see why he says 49. khan used to do that too jonathan khan he was a 49er also but now he's flipped out to 50. i've always been 50. uh it's shavuot and that would be weeks but it's also pentecost which would be 50. Okay, and so seven isn't divisible by 50, obviously. Then the Feast of Trumpets, then Atonement, the Festival of Sukkot. All of these are God's festivals, not man's festivals. So you want to keep what God wants you to do. I want you to be aware that all of these pertain to all of us that believe in God, which we'll call Israel in this case. It's not just for Jerusalem, not just for the Temple Mount, although those occur in that city and on that location, but it's different clocks uh, or different gears running different activities. So I want you to look at the video this way when we get into the calendar and we look at Daniel. You have to understand Daniel's his his mindset and his time frames. Now, this lady is smart, uh, Stephanie Dawn, and she came up with one month as 30 days biblically and one year is 360 days. And you can see her stuff on the right-hand side, prophetic day counts. I'm saying that the most important thing is seven. Even though it's not always divisible by say 30 or 360, it is divisible by a week. And it is divisible by seven years. And it is divisible by many different reasons. And so be aware of that. There are different types of calculations in the Bible. One week, half a week, time, times half a time, 42 months, 1260 days, 1290 days, 1335, 2300 evenings and mornings, day, hour, approximately half an hour. She went through all of them there. So keep in mind, they have biblical and prophetic meaning. And we'll try to discuss some of them tonight. Okay, so now this is the verse that gets people going, and then we'll go into the basis of it, which is Daniel 9, 24 through 27. But this is the verse that really is tough because 
an extra 30 days or an extra 75 days. And why? But he said, go your way, Daniel, for these words are to remain secret and sealed until the time of the end. That's eschatology. Many will purify, cleanse, and refine themselves, but the wicked will keep on acting wickedly, and none of the wicked will understand. And just like today, the wicked don't understand what's going on. But those with discernment, that's, let's hope that's God-fearers like us, will understand. From the time that the regular burnt offering, that's an Ola offering, is taken away and the abomination that causes desolation is set up, there will be 1,290. That minus the standard 1,260 is 30 days. I'm arguing potentially before. And I'm saying those are the two witnesses, possibly. But how blessed will anyone who shaka keeps waiting for him? That's basically what the word means. You would want to wait for this man, Yeshua. And he arrives, Naga, that would be, he would be touching your Tamei and turning you to whore. Tamei is ritually impure. You will become to whore. And so you're anxiously waiting for him to turn you into someone ritually pure at the 1335. So that's five plus 40 days, okay? So it's 30 extra days and five plus 40 extra days. But I'm arguing that the two witnesses, I think, pop up beforehand. I'll show you the different time frames and we'll see what you think. But go your way until the end comes. Then you will rest and rise for your reward at the end of days. So that's Daniel 12, 9 through 13. So that's what we're trying to discuss today. But we have to look at some of the back verses before that. Um, and then I'm going to give you an opinion on some of the back verses. So Daniel 9, 25 or 7, 25 is a time, times and half a time, when the Antichrist is persecuting the, the uh, we call them the, the Kedoshim, the, this would be the righteous people, okay? The, the ones that love Yeshua, uh, love the Torah, love the Bible, things like that, that, that love God. And, and so uh, they're the Kedoshim in the Hebrew, they're the Hagios in the Greek, and I'm arguing that that's going to be Israel and all believers for that time frame in Daniel 7, 25. Daniel 12, 7, a time, ha times and half a time, that's Israel again, all of us. Um, but then now we're going to slide over to the other chart, uh, which is more in Revelation uh, on the right-hand side, trampling the holy city for 42 months. That's Jerusalem. That's Revelation 11, 2 for 42 months. Different time clock than two witnesses prophesying for 1260 days on the Temple Mount. So not only a different time clock, but also a different location. One was related to Jerusalem and 42 months. One was related to the Temple Mount and the two witnesses for 1260. I'm saying they're like two different clocks or two different you know, time pieces, say on a clock, one minutes, one second, one hours, things like that. So Revelation 12, six is the woman fled to the wilderness where she was nourished for 1260 days. That's Israel. That's all of us that are believers. We will probably have to run someplace and hide for that period of time. That's a long time to hide. That's three and a half years, people. Again, Revelation 12, 14 is given that time, times and half a time. I'm arguing that is the woman with the two wings of the great eagle was flown away into the wilderness. That's all Israel. That's believers. And, and then the beast was exercised, was allowed to exercise authority for 42 months. I'm saying that's all Israel. So I'm showing you that it's different clocks. It's different timepieces in terms of how it's calculating what's going on. And so if you don't understand the framework for the chronology, it's really tough to understand it. So I want you to be able to see the location and the way it's described as either 42 months or 1260 days or, or time, times and half a time, why he's doing that. Okay. Now, there are some guys that just don't get it at all. Um, this one's pretty close on the upper left-hand side. I'm arguing that in many ways it might be preterism because I think they're saying everything's cut off and done at the end of the week off to the right-hand side of that upper left-hand chart. But really the 446 is pretty accurate. He's coming up with 29 common era for when Yeshua died and resurrected. And I'm saying it's 30 common era, if you actually count the days properly, but he's going with seven weeks, then 62 weeks, then one week. And I'll show you what that means in just a little bit here. I'm arguing that the SDAs are wonderful people, but they're totally wrong with 2,300 days that turn into 2,300 years, where they start at 457 and they go all the way up to 1843 or 1844. It didn't work out, people. Just deal with it. Then on the upper right-hand side, this is a guy that's actually predicting that we are going to end the Great Tribulation in 2024. Well, he's wrong. 
because we're not in the Great Tribulation right now. And then on the lower right-hand side, Y2K was supposed to be the end of the world. Christopher Columbus was supposed to be the end of the world. Um, lots of things are supposed to be the end of the world. December 12th, 2012 was supposed to be the end of the world. Well, it wasn't. So lots of modern day prophets are wrong. Let's try to get this right. Let's try to do the philosophy of the end of days and look at it from the perspective of correct prophecy, correctly interpreting the Bible and the real news. So the basis for all prophecy is really when we look at Daniel 9, 24 through 27, we understand that when it talks about the weeks, you know, Shavuim, Shavui, Shavim, you've got weeks 70, and then are determined. So you've got this 490 years that are determined on the people to finish uh, of the holy city to finish the transgression, Pesha. That would be a willful sin. So there's an X amount of time frame, and there's a break, obviously, when Yeshua died and resurrected. And so after that, you'll see, and the end of it will be like a flood. And that's actually interesting because that's from uh, Luke 11, 24, the Shetef word in the Hebrew here. It's very similar to the flood word in, in Luke 21. Uh, until the end, uh, and then there are war, Malcolma. And so we are experiencing wars and they will happen all the way through to the end. Um, and so Russia, Ukraine is not the end of the world. It's just another sign. And it's more, I would say that's ethnic groups fighting. They're all, they're all, um, uh, Russian type people. They're all probably Vikings. Okay. Um, desolations, then he shall confirm. Confirm in this case is Gavor and Gavir rather. And so I would say he, it's a the Gavir, ha Gavir. And so that means to me that he is increasing this Brit, this covenant with many Ravim. So there's some great, great ones. So that's the Abrahamic covenant as far as I'm concerned. Uh, for a week, but in the middle of the week, so you can see the week is listed, and that's the seven years, okay? Uh, and bring an end to the sacrifice, Zavak. That's a, a Zavak would be for anyone that is uh, circumcised and ritually pure. So Tahor, as I mentioned before, they may uh, participate. And also in the Minka, which is a, a, a grain offering, and on the wing, the Kanaf. And so I'm wearing Zitzitz right now. Uh, my Kanafs would be my Zitzitz on my garment. Uh, and then uh, Shomem, or no, uh, Shaket. Yeah, so that's abominations, make desolate, uh, even until the consummation is determined and poured out on the desolate, Shomem again. So the bottom line is, this is the basis of all prophecy, and I'm getting at it from this angle, that you've got seven years. So you're going to hear people scream at you and say, no, it's only three and a half years. It's seven years. And also, it relates to the Temple Mount. Those, those seven years, really, that is the most precise measurement possible. And the sacrifices are precise. And it tells you in the midst of that week that something huge and horrible is going to occur. Okay, now what this person said on the left-hand side is that the Antichrist signs a seven-year covenant. It kind of sounds like that, kind of the Abrahamic covenants. Then it goes forward 1260 days. The Antichrist goes into the Naos, which is the Holy of Holies. Doesn't say temple, doesn't say Huron. I'll try to show that to you. Then you have another 1260 days. And then at the end, you seem to have another 30 days and then another 75 days minus, you know, so 1335 minus 1260. I would argue it's really 40, 40 plus five days in addition to that, because the 30 days are the 1290 minus 1260. So I, I just want to point out one other interesting thing, which is that if you do 1260 days divided by seven, you come up with 180, which were the years of Isaac. Now, I'll let you just look at this and, and realize that Isaac was 180 years of age when he died, and there might be a prophetic significance. I don't know. I mean, Abraham was 100 years old when Isaac was born. Um, he sacrificed him when they were both, when Isaac was 37 and he was 137. Sarah was 90. Um, and, and there's a, a huge prophetic import in there. I don't know how it relates to the end of days, but it's just interesting that 180 divides uh, you know, perfectly into 1260 days, seven times. Just interesting. Keep that in mind. Okay. Um, and genealogies are important too. So the dates and the times and the people, 
you know, the genealogies are there in Matthew and in Luke, and and they're meaningful. I mean, like uh, Abraham was born in 1948. Very interesting from from the date of creation. So just be aware that these things are important. Now let's get back into the main thing of what we're doing, which is this is Revelation 11, 1 through 6, and there are two counts here, and I'm going to give you one is for the city trampled and one is for the two witnesses, and, and so it's city versus the Temple Mount. So let's try this. I was given a measuring rod like a stick and told, get up and measure the temple. It says Naos. It does not say Heron. Heron is not listed in any chapter of the Bible after Acts. Okay, so not in, Reve not in Romans through Revelation do you see Heron listed. Heron is building or buildings in the Greek. Naos in, in the Greek would be probably just the Holy of Holies. So the, the Holy of Holies of God and the altar, and count how many people are worshiping there. But the court outside the Naos, leave that out. Don't measure it because it has been given over to the Goyim, and they will trample over the holy city for 42 months. So you see how the Temple Mount is related to the Naos area, and then you see now the city will be trampled by the Gentiles for 42 months. And I will give power to my two witnesses back now or to the Temple Mount, and they will prophesy for 1260 days. So two different counts, 42 months for the city, 1260 days for the two witnesses on the Temple Mount. That's a difference. I, I think it's a huge prophetic difference. I think it's like different timepieces, and they may kick off at different times. So that's why he listed it that way. So these are my two olive trees and the two menorahs standing before the Lord of the earth. If anyone tries to do them harm, fire comes from their mouth and consumes their enemies. Yes, if anyone tries to harm them, this is how he must die. And they have the authority to shut up the sky so that no rain falls during the period of the prophesying. They also have the authority to turn the waters into blood and to strike the earth. And I believe it's Moses and Eliyahu with every kind of plague similar to what Moses and Eliyahu did. So that's very interesting. So look at two different time frames listed differently and related to two different locations, one to the Temple Mount, one to the city. Just keep it in mind. But after the three and a half days, a breath of life from God fell and entered them. So they died and they stood up on their feet and a great fear fell on those who saw them, the two witnesses. And then the two heard a loud voice on the Temple Mount from heaven saying to them, come up here. And they went up to heaven in a cloud while their enemies watched them. In that hour, it's Hora in the Greek, yeah, it is. And there was a great earthquake and a tenth of the city collapsed. 7,000 people were killed specifically in the earthquake and the rest were awestruck and gave glory to the God of heaven. The second woe passed. That is the sixth trumpet. And the third woe is the seventh trumpet. Those are time date stamps, people. Okay, so we have locations given, we have time frames given, we have time date stamps given, and the seventh angel sounded, sounded the shofar, and we have loud, loud voices in heaven saying, okay, so that's Revelation 11, 11 through 15. So let's get back to the core issue, which is the extra 30 days, uh, overall an extra 75 days. Why, you know, how does it relate to us? You know, obviously we know about the 1260 days. What's the 1290? What's the 1335? Doug Krieger down on the lower left-hand side does a nice job of explaining it in terms of, it seems like it's the extra 30 days. And he is time date stamping off the day of atonement, which is very interesting. Um, and so I, 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 I agree with him. I think that is when Yeshua returns, but then he has 30 days to do something and another 45 days to do something. And I'm arguing that if it was going to be this year, and I'm not saying it's going to be this year, I highly doubt if it could be this year. Um, 30 days before Tishri, uh, before would be Tishri 1 of this year, which would be September 26th of 2022. And then it would go all the way seven years out to September 19th, which would be Yom Kippur. And then you would add the extra five days on and, and other things like that at the end. So you would have the 1260, the 1290, and the 1335. Okay. So this is um, that nice Stephanie Dawn again. And so she's arguing after the second coming of Yeshua HaMashiach, it will take approximately 30 days to judge the living and either send them to hell or welcome them into the millennial kingdom. No, 30 days to war with the Goyim. That's found in Ezekiel 38, 39, Zechariah 14 and Revelation 19. The birds have to feast. 
there's a whole lot going on during those 30 days. Then the cleanup happens after that. So first there is the war. And so you'll have Yom Kippur where judgment is cast down and then you'll have the five days and then you'll start to, you'll, the birds will start eating during the, that war. You'll have the war occurring as you celebrate uh, the festival of Sukkot. It's the, the festival of booths. So she's partially correct. The two witnesses begin during the first 1260 days. There's that covenant confirmed. The two witnesses are killed. Uh, the, uh, the beast is killed and resurrected at about the midpoint. Then you've got the second 1260 days. Um, so she's pretty close. And so um, what I liked from her is way down on the bottom right hand side. This is the meaning of the 1,335 days. There are 75 days between 1260 and 1335. The 75 days are between Yom Kippur and Hanukkah in any given year. She's actually wrong, but she's close enough that it is at least getting to Kislev, you know, um, in any given year. So the 1335 day count would seem to reenact the festival of Hanukkah. She's getting close. Hanukkah seems to be in there somehow. It's a rededication. Okay. So now let's take it to where I think we are. I think seal one opened in 1967. We had the six day war. And then on the seventh day, they gave back the Temple Mount. And so we won and then we lost. And God doesn't like it when he gives you a gift and you hand it back. So then seal number two was the Bush Wars. Technically 9-11 started it, but really it kicked off in 2003, that's seal two. And then seal three is 2012, that was part of a prophecy. And so that's basically, you're noticing it now. Food prices are going through the roof and there will be food scarcity this fall and next year. It'll, it'll get really ugly people. And it's like world leaders are trying to do their best. Now, once again, I'm not predicting anything and I'm not saying that it's going to occur this year, but if it would, if things would kick off this fall, a lot would need to occur, obviously. You would notice that then on um, the end would be 2029 on 919, that's the 10th of Tishri. So that would be a long time from now, seven plus years from now. Um, but it would begin on 1026 of 2022. If you did the minus 30 days, then you would maybe notice the two witnesses around 926 of 2022. I'm just arguing that the two witnesses in any given year would show up maybe 30 days beforehand, maybe, maybe a closer to the midpoint. I mean, to the uh, the beginning point, um, but it seems like there might be a clue that they would show up beforehand. And 30 days beforehand is an interesting day to show up 926 of this particular year. I can't remember what that would be, 926. Uh, that is, uh, yeah, Rosh Kadesh, uh, Cheshvan. Yeah, yeah, that, that could potentially work. So anyway, just keep that in mind. Um, it's just interesting that in any given year, I had thought that it would kick off, say, during Hechshvan 17, which would be the time of Noah's flood. But it might make more sense for it to be, you know, um, around 926 of or 1026 of 2022 going forward if it was going to be this year. Once again, I'm not thinking it's going to be this year. There's just too much that needs to occur. So um, the actual count of when we're supposed to count the 1260 days and the 1260 is based on Daniel 927, based on the agreement. It's not based on the two witnesses, but I think that's why Daniel is giving you those counts because you're going to count off the two witnesses and you're gonna get your count off by 30 days. So you're gonna to have to make sure that you get through the full count. So keep in mind, the actual count has to be based on the covenant that is signed and agreed to and, you, and they may not announce it. So it's not gonna be based off the two witnesses. So if they pop up early, you're not gonna know it. So, so anyway, um, and if they were gonna show up this particular year, I'm arguing that Monday, the 26th of September is Tishri one. Interesting, just, just watch it. So I'm arguing that the two witnesses would show up say 30 days before in any given year, then the tribulation would start 30 days later, there would be a midpoint, there would be an ending, and then you would want to monitor for Sukkot, and then uh, you would have, have an extra 70 days after that. So once again, if it was, then you would add those extra days on. 11-3 uh, of 2029 would be the final 1335th day, and that would be after, say, a World War III. Just interesting. I don't think it's going to occur that way, but it's just interesting. So note it. So once again, 
1260 days, 1290, 1335 seem to be related to Israel, Jerusalem, and the Temple Mount. It seems to be the case. I can't exactly prove it, but it seems to be the case. I argue that the seven seals sound like the Matthew 24 birth pangs, so we're different that way. I argue that people know when they're pregnant, they understand the signs. We're pregnant right now, people. We're going through birth pangs. Um, you, your body changes as you get closer to delivery. That's different than other people. They really aren't calculating the differences. Uh, your birth pangs are regular at first, and then they become regular. Your water breaks. You don't push until your cervix is dilated to a 10. Male pastors aren't listening to their wives. And so that's why I think all 10 virgins are asleep. Even guys like me are asleep. So we're in the birth pangs. The tribulation occurs after that. Then the great tribulation. Will we know when it started? I don't know. But I'm telling you, I think the two witnesses show up probably 30 days before you go in. And then there's some kind of a time frame at the end that rotated around Sukkot. So Rosh Hashanah. Yom Kippur, you want your garments clean during that time, going into Yom Kippur. It's a sign of being in covenant and going to a wedding. And so you want to be clean for the wedding. Be blessed. Thank you for your time. And thank you for one more session.